Hello guys and welcome for another video with tips for Eternum. Today the topic will touch on the PvE side of the game and I hope that all of the tips will find a good use in your gameplay. Before going any further I want to quickly remind you that you can support my channel for free by subscribing to it and of course by joining my Discord community server. If you want to catch me live in action feel free to check the description below as there you will find all the links to my stream. Thank you. With the intro out of the way, let's not waste any more time and let's dive in with number 20. Understanding the roles. The PvE in Eternum is based on the Holy Trinity system. This means that we have the typical tank, healer and DPS combination of roles. There are of course some exceptions where people try to reach the limits as they will aim to apply the highest damage possible even with the tank or the healer roles. Regardless of that, Choosing and understanding your role is the first step towards better results. Number 19. Patience. In many engages the aggro will be taken by the first attacker or by the healer if he does active or passive heal over someone in the party. Make sure to be patient enough so the tank can get his aggro. If you do that properly you will be able to combine all the AoE burst with your teammates and eventually to clear even faster. Number 18. High risk equals high rewards. This tip is self-explanatory, but I want to touch on it regardless. In the later stages of the game, people start to aim at leaderboards and mostly at the top 5 speed and score runs. In order to get the best results, you have to apply a big amount of risk in your runs. This might mean a lot bigger pulls, lower constitution or even sneaky skips in order to improve your time. I would suggest you to start your runs without that risk and slowly to progress towards it, otherwise you might face difficulties and potential failure. Number 17. Correct builds. This tip is extremely important as without it you will spend a lot of time wiping the floor of M3 expeditions. Understanding which exact build is necessary is crucial for your performance in the PvE of Eternum. Of course, the skills for your weapons are not the only requirement for that, but also the items with their respective perks in them. Number 16. Correct skills. In addition to the previous tip, this one is heavily focusing on the perks for the skills of your choice. Example can be given for some of the perks which are 100% needed in your runs when we talk about M3 expeditions. Such perks are the Fortified Sacred Ground which will provide higher defense to anyone standing in the healing circle created by the Lifestaff. Enfeebling Skewer is a spear perk which will apply weakened to the all enemies hit and will reduce their damage. Enfeebling Maelstrom will also apply weaken and this is one of the abilities from the Great Axe that also has AoE. Number 15. Correct Gems and Types of Damage. In Aeternum there are many different types of damage. In total there are 3 physical types, Slash, Thrust and Strike, and another 6 elemental types, Fire, Ice, Arcane, Nature, Void and Lightning. Most of the PvE bosses have their specific type of damage, but in general there are 4 mutation types, Fire, Ice, Nature and Void. This means that all of the mobs in that specific dungeon will have high amount of elemental type of the damage. With that in mind, be prepared to slot the necessary elemental gems in your gear for better protection. Example could be given with fire mutation, where we can slot up to 8 rubies in our gear for a total protection of 48%. Also you can use an amulet with fire protection, which will give you an additional 15%. If we have a fight with a specific boss that has let's say slash damage, then we can replace our amulet and we can use slash protection or we can even add some moonstones to our gear which will also give us this benefit. Number 14. PvE consumables. A lot of people don't pay attention to the different type of buffs that can be applied in their PvE runs. For offensive buffs you should always use the attribute food which can increase your attributes of choice by up to 48. Honing Stone which will provide you another 7% of empower for both weapons and of course the specific coating for the type of enemy which will give you another 15% bonus damage. Make sure to also use the defensive and utility buffs such as Ward Potion which will reduce the damage taken from the specific type of enemies and you can also use Hearty Meals for mana and health regeneration. 
If necessary, you can also extend to use of gemstone and oak flesh depending on the situation. Number 13. Trophies. Additional source for higher damage are the trophies which you can place in your house. They are a total of 6 different trophies which you can use to boost your damage against Ancient, Corrupted, Angry Earth, Lost, Human and Beasts. It goes without saying that if you aim for good performance, those trophies are a must have. You can place any type of a trophy only once per house, so that would mean that you can have in total 3 at once. Number 12. Expedition Mechanics During your first run in normal expeditions or lower level of mutated ones, you will probably not face all of the mechanics that the bosses have. However, with the increase of difficulty and the higher HP and resistance in those dungeons, you will be forced to follow their mechanics. Make sure to know what has to be done, as otherwise you might see your party laying on the floor pretty quickly. Number 11. Priority of targets. In all runs, the best possible outcome is when the tank gets all the aggro of the mobs in the room, DPS follows up with high AoE damage and everything dies in several seconds. That of course is not always the case and some mobs can be extremely annoying. Yes, I mean the archers. They will keep their distance and will shoot from afar, so they should be always the priority to kill first. Ideally, you would want to pull all the melee mobs on top of the archer ones, so that might save you some time. Number 10. Revive is not always good. When someone from your party falls on the ground, you have the chance to revive them. However, be careful when trying to do so, as many times you can potentially kill him instead. If you have the aggro on an archer or another enemy, there is a high chance that he will get killed before even standing on his feet. Another case could be an incoming attack, which can hit him right after he gets revived. Keep in mind that for a short period of time, maybe 1-2 to two seconds, the person who gets revived cannot do anything. Number 9. Creating a clump. I already mentioned that briefly in the previous tips, but now I can go into a bit further explanation what does a clump mean. As I said, tank goes first and gets the aggro of the mobs. Then, if you have, and you should have, a player with a great axe, he uses the ability called Gravity Well. This will pull all enemies into a place and it will allow your party to damage all of them at once. Keep in mind that if there is further enemies from the range of the gravity well, you can use another ability from the kit of the great axe, which is called reap, in order to pull the enemies even closer. Number 8. Mutation Variations There are a total of 4 mutation variations at this moment. Fire, Ice, Nature and Void. Of course, some of them are easier than others, but I would say that the most forgiving one might be the Ice. However, it is not ideal for speed or score record runs due to the big amount of slows. The best one for setting records is the Void, but some variations of it might be quite scary. Nature is both annoying and hard due to the high damage received and the passive healing of the enemies. The worst and the hardest mutation in my opinion is the Fire as it's not even close to the others. The amount of damage that you will get in this mutation is just ludicrous, especially if you aim at records with low constitution. Number 7. Heart Runes Same as in PvP, the Heart Runes are extremely important part for the mutations in Eternum. Many of them are giving amazing bonuses for the whole party or simply can be used for higher damage output. Discuss with your teammates what heart runes will be needed for your run and always consider to use them depending on the mutation. This way you will manage to get the maximum benefit. Number 6. Team Compositions If we talk about high level PvE and more specifically M3 Expedition runs, we cannot pass to mention that synergy between all the 5 players is necessary. The most common team composition can be built around a tank with a sword and shield for the use of leadership passive and a secondary weapon of choice, healer with a life staff and void gauntlet, one DPS with rapier and ice gauntlet, one DPS with spear and great axe, and another DPS with great sword and great axe. Now this is really a standard 5-man group which aims at mostly clumps due to the two great axes in the combo but there is also a lot of other varieties such as two spears or two rapiers and so on.
The main goal should be to reach high weaken and rend so the fights can be easy as otherwise in those high mutations you are looking at one shot angle. Number 5. Tank. Eternum has different way of tanking from other games and this mainly comes due to the fact that you have only 3 abilities per weapon. This means that you as a tank cannot fully rely on your spells to keep the aggro. Make sure to apply auto attacks whenever possible as if you don't your teammates will steal away the attention of the mobs and your run can become a nightmare in no time. Number 4. Healer. There are two types of healers in the PvE of Eternum. The first one is the standard healer whose main purpose is to heal the others and the other one who wants to out DPS the DPS players. Of course, as you can imagine, the second one is way harder and mostly used for speed or score runs. That's why I suggest you to start with the basics and progressively to increase the risk over time. Number 3. DPS. It sounds quite simple. You are a DPS, so all you need to do is damage your targets. Well, not really. In most cases, before damaging the enemies, it is necessary to set up the scene for your whole party. Setting up a clump, as we already mentioned, is one of those tricks, but also pulling out the mobs who were missed by the tanks or helping your healer if he is in danger. DPS not always means high damage and nothing else. Keep that in mind. Number 2. Speed and score runs. I've mentioned a couple of times the speed and score runs related to the leaderboards in M3 mutations. While technically being the highest tier of endgame PvE, I would highly recommend you to avoid those expeditions until you get the proper gear for them. If you really like to challenge yourself with it, feel free to go and give it a try, but note that spending few hours in a place might not be your best experience. Number 1. Learning the attack patterns. With the time spent in the game, you will notice that most of the enemies have specific attack patterns. With good memory and quick reactions, you can use that to your advantage and apply even higher damages while avoiding the hits. This is most noticeable for the tanks, as in the real endgame they are tanks who can literally hold aggro with light gear and no more than 100 constitution. Bonus tip. Many people consider PvE as repetitive and boring after hundreds of runs in the expeditions. My suggestion to you would be to challenge yourself each and every time when you go for such runs. Would that be a speedrun attempt, no dead clear or simply no hit clear, the choice is yours. Keep in mind that such challenges will improve your game sense and personal skill level and can serve as a bridge towards the PvP in the game. If you have missed my 20 PvP tips for Eternum or you simply want to know how to make more gold coins in the game, make sure to check the videos that you see on your screen. If you enjoyed the tips and you want to know more about the game, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join my Discord community for which you can find a link in the description below. Once again, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.